My name is Clara Wall. I founded this library 100 years ago this year. This video tells my life story. I was born Clara Young into a well-off, civic-minded family in 1858. We lived in Summit, New Jersey. I was the fourth of seven children in my household, and like many women of my generation, I was taught to cook, clean, and provide a proper household and haven for my husband. I married John Wall, a blacksmith from New Providence in 1877 when I was 19 years old. I had six children of my own who kept me very busy. Edith, my eldest, was born one year later. Frank was born a year after that. 1895 was a banner year for me. I had twins. Francis and Emily were born that year. Emily was a sickly child and didn't live to see 10 years old. Frances went on to become a teacher and lived with John and me. She was on the board of the library and guided it through much of its growth after my death. My youngest, Jay Wilbur, was born in 1898, just old enough to be drafted into World War I. I became active in the Red Cross when Wilbur went off to war. All of my children were grown by then, and President Wilson urged everyone to put their energies to work helping the Red Cross meet the needs of the thousands of young men joining the Allied forces on the battlefields of Europe. I was one of those who started a Red Cross chapter in New Providence. By the war's end, nearly one-third of the United States population was either a donor to the Red Cross or serving as a volunteer. We called our chapter the National Special Aid Society. There were 25 of us and I was elected president. We met on Monday nights to sew clothing, sheets, and other garments for our boys in the Great War. The greater part of the work was done at home during our spare time as most of us were working during the day. I had a shop where I made lingerie and dress goods as well as sold cigars, candy, and other assorted notions. After the war, our group was instrumental in raising money for a monument to the 74 men and two women from New Providence who served in the Great War. A large boulder was placed at the four corners, the intersection of Springfield and South Street, and a bronze tablet honoring them was placed on the stone. Here is that monument today. Thankfully, no one from New Providence died in World War I, and Wilbur went on to have a very successful career as an insurance underwriter. This advertisement is from the fire department's first annual ball, a benefit that took place in 1934. Wilbur was a member of the New Providence Fire Department, just like his dad. I was the first woman from Union County to be elected to the school board in 1921. Opportunities for women to serve opened up after the passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution allowing women the right to vote. I was one of the initial group of women around Union County elected to school boards during the 1920s and I served on several committees including transportation and buildings and grounds. And I formed the first library committee in 1921. It included Lawrence Winchell, principal of the nearby Lincoln School, and my daughter Frances who served as treasurer. The papers were signed in October at my home and we opened in the Red Cross rooms at 1283 Springfield Avenue with 15 of our own books and 50 borrowed from the state. Although this picture of the building was taken before 1921, the library was located to the left of the store. In the beginning, library service was provided by the committee with help from other volunteers. Soon though, the job of keeping the library open fell to me. On days when the library was closed, it was used by the Red Cross District Nurse. Since the library was not part of town government, the library committee had to run nearly constant fund drives. We had annual lawn parties during the summer where we played cards and sold food. I remember a party where everyone was asked to come in costume representing a book. The New Providence Dramatic Club put on benefit plays and Frances recalls selling more dairy-made chocolate candies than she could shake a stick at. Lending records were kept in a lined notebook. We kept track of titles, borrow dates, and borrower names and crossed their names off when books were returned. We tallied the records by hand and our circulation grew rapidly. By 1927, we had an annual circulation of 12,044 books. This book, 
written in my hand with my favorite black fountain pen, dates from 1928 and lists records from January through March. Our collection grew rapidly. In our first year, the initial 65 books grew to 1,500 books. By the end of 1921, we circulated more than 175 volumes a week. These are some of the titles that we had at that time. We also circulated magazines. These are a few of the titles we offered. I became known as the first librarian and was referred to that way around town. In 1925, the Borough Council recognized my dedication and hired me as the town librarian. Much of my annual salary of $250 went back into the library to buy books and supplies. As a matter of fact, I spent so much time there that I knew every book in the library. I could greet every person by name, remember the books they had read, their reading preferences, and make recommendations. In 1928, the library moved to 1310 Springfield Avenue, the former New Providence Academy, where we remained until after World War II. By 1933, the library was so important to the community that the Library Association authorized me to communicate with federal authorities about obtaining aid for a dedicated library building. One of our initial library committee members, Lyman Coddington, generously donated land at the Four Corners for the building. In the end, nothing came of it, and it would be another two decades before a dedicated building was erected. Here is what the land that Mr. Coddington gave to the association looks like today. I retired from the library in 1939, just after my son Jay Wilbur threw me a big 80th birthday party. By that time, the work of buying hundreds of books each year, the constant search for funding and keeping up with an annual circulation of well over 14,000 items had become too much. I left the library in good hands, though. My friend, Margaret Radke, with whom I had worked on Ladies' Aid Society projects at the Methodist Church, was appointed as our first professional librarian. Margaret worked with the Borough Council and the Library Association to incorporate the library into town government. This picture was taken at our 50th anniversary in 1971. Margaret is on the far left and Francis is in the center. The institution I started and nurtured had grown into an integral part of the community and was on its way to becoming a public institution in the community. In later episodes, I'll tell you about our growth and expansion.